when what you think you should be doing is taken away, mm-hmm. um, it uh, you go through a lot of different things, right? Uh, yeah. And yeah. once you finally, and thank God, and you know, I was able to, with the support of, of, of my wife and kids, mm-hmm. come out on the other side of it and see yeah. a purpose, yeah. well, the purpose becomes the ability to serve others. And yeah. these young men... Yeah. And this program is what I want to serve. That's really cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Chris Ellis, welcome to the table. Uh, Chris, good friend of mine, longtime friend from Decatur, Illinois, uh, with Bree Law. And uh, it's an honor to have you here today. So thank you for coming and uh, love to hear about what's going on at Bree Law because I understand you've got multiple offices now and, and find out what, what else is going on in, in your world. Probably uh, talk a little bit about the uh, OKO too because I understand you got a lot going on there. Yeah, no, Brad, yeah. thank you. Yeah. That's great. And uh, Chris, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, great I'm, to meet uh, you as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've got a long history, and I've got yeah. stories that yeah. I won't tell. We <laughs> talked we, about I that. Think we need to talk, we need talk to add about them later. After after yeah. Yeah. Off <laughs> record. We had a lot of fun over the years. You we, know we've had yeah. a great time. For sure. Uh, first off, uh, th- uh, thank you guys for having me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's We're great. Glad to you know, have you. When, honored you'd be here. When, I, when I've listened to a lot of what you guys have had, you know, c- carrot immersion, talking about yeah. changing. Yep electrical motors in central Illinois and throughout the whole world. You've got Nicole Bateman coming on here right. talking about the I know. development That's... coming to the whole area. So I started thinking, well, what am I going to talk about? Right. And I right. was like, well, <laughs> like my wife told me, expectations are very low. So just <laughs> roll with yeah. it. So we'll talk about the 20-year anniversary because that is it is big. Pretty, pretty significant. Yes. It yeah. is. So we celebrated, it was last month, 20 years at Bolin, Robinson, and Ellis, and yeah. uh, we're very proud. We've got currently 10 attorneys. Mm-hmm. We're in four, four offices. Our main office is in Decatur. Yeah. Uh, we handle all areas of law, criminal, divorce, personal injury. We represent a number of corporations. We yep. do large commercial transactions. We, you know, there's really nothing that we don't handle. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got an office in Sullivan. We've got an office in Monticello, an office in Lincoln. Um, it's been a privilege to serve, you know, yeah. with, with these people. Yep. And, and yeah. I say serve, and I mean that because when, when you're a lawyer and you have a client, you know, you, you really have to look at it one or two ways. You've got to look at it that, hey, I'm here to get a paycheck. Right. Or you've got to look at it that you're there to serve. Sure. And I, I can say with all, from the bottom of my heart, I know that my lawyers are there to serve the client. That's and I've cool. seen it. I've yeah. seen it over and over again. And, uh, you know, we're very proud. Yeah. We're yeah. super proud of 20 yeah. years. Well, you know, knowing John Robinson and how he's wired too, I mean, yeah. what a great partner to have. And of course I grew up with, uh, TG Bolin, you know, the yeah. Bill Bolin, um, you know, rest his soul. He was a good friend of mine. We went to high school together, but I mean, you, you got three great partners and I have to believe you guys have got some great lawyers that work for you guys. And you were one of the original Partners, correct? The three you just mentioned? Yeah, correct. Yes. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So, um, so I grew up in Mount Zion. Okay. Right? Went to undergrad at Illinois Wesleyan. Mm-hmm. Then I went to law school at Georgetown. So I was in oh, Washington, D.C. That's right. I remember that, yeah. And I said, I'm not coming back home. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> my uh, high As school. As we all do. High <laughs> school, right? You know, we, we, we all leave, yep. but there's something yep. about home. Well, my yep. high school sweetheart and I. Uh-huh. Got married, and she wanted to move back to Illinois. And I said, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. I'll move to Chicago. But, yeah. you know, that's it. That's Illinois. <laughs> yeah. So we moved, <laughs> we moved to Chicago. Well, I started working on a big case up there, and for whatever reason, I think she was behind it. I met John Robinson. Oh, okay, yep. And John and I started talking, and I found out, the, the man is a legend. I mean, yeah. he went at age 28 against Remington Arms. They had a shotgun barrel that exploded. Mm-hmm. 
They never lost a trial. So he's 28 years old, goes in a courtroom all his own in Macon County, beats him for the first time. Wow. Is that right? After that, travels all over the country, becomes the expert in it, beats him, I think, fifty over 50 wow. times before certifying a class action. So, wow. so I tell, I, you know, I tell you that man. because here I am in Chicago. I'd been in D.C. I'm like, well— I'm not coming back to Decatur. Then I meet somebody like John. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yep. you know, maybe, maybe this works. So I tell my firm in Chicago, hey, I've got this lawyer down here, and I've got a case we can work on together. Mm-hmm. John said, sure. I think he and my wife had also been talking. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't prove any me. of this. <laughs> um, so I told Kelly, I said, look, I will only move home if I get – you know, if I get to yeah. be fulfilled, do something exciting. She was like, well, look at John. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. look at John. So uh, <laughs> I moved home. I was at a different firm for about six months. It was Keyhart, Robinson, and Booth. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah, with sure. Mike, Mike, Mike Keyhart, Keyhart, Ed Booth, two of other mm-hmm. great Decatur lawyers. Nothing mm-hmm. bad in the world to say. John came to me and said, what do you think about starting a firm? I mm-hmm. said, like me and you, and he mm-hmm. goes, yeah, and yeah. T.G. Bolin. I said, yeah. said, yeah, I'm I'm in. So then then I had to go home and tell my wife, yeah. and I said, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> do you think I'm a good lawyer? Yeah. She said, well, you know, I think. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you trust me? She's yeah. like, yeah. I said, well, these guys want, you know, to start this law firm. She's like, great. I said, well, I won't have a, I don't get a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. And you know how you're pregnant? Well, we don't have health insurance anymore. We got to pay for all that on our own. And she said, she said what? You know, have you agreed to this? I'm like, well, you know, maybe. But yeah. It it's turned uh, out pretty well. It turned <laughs> out well. And, and I learned from from the absolute best. Yeah, that's terrific. Is John, yeah, still, awesome is John still practicing law? John is still... John, it, there is no stopping somebody like John. And, you know, he's a firm believer. And as I've grown older, I actually believe it myself that mm-hmm. if you stop and if you stop moving, mm-hmm. generally nothing good comes from it. That's right. So yeah. We've seen it, right? Yeah. All of us. We all so have. Many people. I yeah. agree 100%. My yeah. partner, T.G. Bolin, you yeah. know, when, when he retired, I, I, I was so blessed. I got to go and sit with him. And mm-hmm. I, one of the most intelligent men I've met in my life, and I've yeah. got to meet some great lawyers around mm-hmm. the country. And TG was something. I mean, he yeah. was so smart. But I saw – well, I, he was inactive. He wrote a book on the Romanoff murders. I forgot that oh, yeah. after he retired. But there's something about moving away from the practice of law sure. that just starts to happen. And John, I don't know if he'll ever retire. But yeah. he is working less. He yeah. works in – Florida and home. He tries uh, to work, you know, yeah. 20, 30 hours yeah. a week. Well, I just saw him the other day. He looks amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. 77. Yeah, his hair's just a little 77. grayer, but everything else looks identical to what <laughs> would look like 15, 20 years ago. His, <laughs> you know? golf, awesome. his yeah. golf game, tennis yeah. game, pickleball game. Yeah. So, yeah, he's there, and, you know, he he's he is mentoring all of these young attorneys. And yeah. Our, our young lawyers, I couldn't be more proud of. And Brad, I know you'll appreciate this, hearing the story about you and Chris and sure. and your and your friendship. Yeah, one of my partners is my best friend growing up, Matt Spain, and oh, he's yeah. a fantastic lawyer. Yeah, I know and Matt. Yeah, great close guy. Close friend. Two of my other partners are my wife's cousins, Zach oh. Anderson and Courtney Anderson, who mm-hmm. started clerking at the firm. No intention on being lawyers, yeah. and now they're two of the best lawyers in Central Illinois. That's so, true. Yeah. I mean, we really have a family, yeah. and, you know, I'm proud of it. And, I, you know, Brad Brad knows this, and I don't mind, you know, talking yeah. about it. I had some significant health issues in mm-hmm. 2015, mm-hmm. and they have have led to the point where I'm not able to actively practice. I don't go to court anymore. I'm mm-hmm. You know, I'm not there every day. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if it's um, – we all think of ourselves in a certain light, right? right? And I remember thinking, well, the firm obviously is done. Right. You know, I was 38 when the brain tumor came. I was at the mm-hmm. height of my career. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was one in all the big cases. I was one yeah. traveling all over the country. Yeah. And I thought it has to end because mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because 
you know, you would think part of me, it's not true. I felt no sadness, only pride mm -hmm. that they have pulled together yeah, mm -hmm. and kept going the, firm. the way they've yeah. done. Yep. That the firm has not only pulled together, they've grown yeah. and they've gotten better mm. and stronger. And I still have a really big office there. And I'm like, mm -hmm. guys, I don't need the office. They're like, yeah. oh, yes, you do. Yeah. You, know, you come in and yeah. I'll go in and set. They told me for my mental health, it's yeah. good that I go in there. So Absolutely. I go and I walk yeah. around like, hey, what's yeah. going on? And <laughs> Uh, but well, it's, it's got to make you extremely proud to see what you guys have built. And I know it was a team effort, but so, you proud. know, yeah, people want to work for winners, right? I mean, ex athletes want to work for winners, uh, and, and be part of something great. I mean, I think they do. I, yeah, I know for I sure. do. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. And that's, you know, that, that doesn't, I, I can't say that lightly enough. I mean, it's just like, Hey, that's legit. <laughs> and you, yeah. you were part of building that. And you know, you are. I, I had not thought of it that way, and mm -hmm. you are absolutely correct because I remember being drawn to John. Yeah. He just wins. I yeah. mean, he just has that about him, and I mm -hmm. wanted to emulate it. And yeah, yeah, that's pretty I cool. I do see that with, with our other attorneys, and we do. I mean, you know, no, you don't win everything, but they've right. got some big wins. Big and wins, that's yeah. great. I'm proud of them. So the yeah, firm's doing cool. great, 20 years. A lot of growth. Um, uh, judge Dan Flannel was a chief of the Sixth Circuit judge, uh -huh. and he retired and joined our firm. I saw that on okay. your website the other day. I was peeking mm -hmm. around, yeah. around the corner. Yeah. It, so. yeah. yeah. It's super cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm proud of him, and I, I'm anxious. Not anxious. I'm looking forward to seeing how much more mm -hmm. that, they, that they have to offer. Well, undoubtedly, you are probably using that same level of passion and uh, winning at the uh, old King's Orchard. Let's talk about that because I know you're very involved there. Yes. Which is a great organization for the Decatur community, and I don't know that there's a lot of people that know what goes on and, and how you're benefiting a lot of those kids yeah, or, or no, individuals. I, Great. I can't yeah. wait to talk about OKO. So um, Old, Old King's Orchard, it, it's, um, you know how sometimes you're put in a position that there's a need for you and for what you can offer, but when you step back and look at it, you realize you needed it as mm. much yeah. as they, oh, yeah. as much as they needed, you know, sure. and you know, whether it's God, a higher power, whatever anyone wants to attribute that to, um, that's what OKO has been for me. And so the the organization is, is um, it is a community center in the heart of inner city Decatur. Okay. It's right behind the Grace United Methodist Church. Okay. Church. Sure. It's one of the streets that we've had to block off yep. because of drive-by shootings. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, it's in an area that, unfortunately, like a lot of towns, that have been, I won't say neglected, but they, they've had struggles, right? Yes. As yeah. jobs have left, as Correct. schools have gone down. So um, Old King's Orchard, what, what it, it's, it's evolved as a program. And, and where we are now, the executive director is a, a, a young man. He's my age. He's maybe older than me. <laughs> well, you are young. Yeah, right. Yeah, right? That's Chris. what I'm doing. I'm like, yeah, young, young, young man. I'll go. I'll go with hey, that. Uh, at least your hair's not falling out. You know, I mean, it, my, it, my it's is. getting there. If I <laughs> uh, my my girls would tell you differently, yeah, as, they, as they like to point out. Uh, they also tell me it's gray. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? My hair is not gray. Well, real quick, and I'll let you finish. But I was no, somebody yeah. took a picture of me standing at a party from behind, and I didn't know it was me. And I said, "Who's the dude with the bald head <laughs> on top, like the little?" donut thing uh -huh. going on and what was me mm. and i was like well how come the guy that cuts my hair miles i said miles why didn't you say something he yeah. goes because man it just started and he goes and it's falling out like a lot quick it's going <laughs> yeah, quick, it's going quick. Uh, can you like can you okay can you glue that. it back on I'm like you gotta do something about yeah. this uh, so devon joiner is our uh -huh. executive director and you know i tell you what this man is he a local guy he's decatur a local guy, guy okay. decatur guy he's actually yep. a taekwondo Champ ah, back in the I day. Have heard his, his family name. was yes part I've... of the. I mean, what? Let me back up. He tells me that. Uh huh. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. For all I know, you haven't verified. You know, it? I have <laughs> not verified. I don't think I want to. I know. But uh, Devon is. He is. He is a gem in our town. The connections yeah. I've seen that he has with all levels of the community. We go in and we talk to the mayor, and we talk to the city manager and we talked to to Doris Turner our local senator sure. when you 
he's he's there. You go, you talk to leaders of our local gangs. Mm-hmm. He's there. You talk to school district leaders. He's there. He he wow. has the respect of everyone in a mm-hmm. way that I've not seen. You, you know, normally yeah. you can talk to one group and, and right. not the other. Not the other. So, so you guys will reach out to the gang leader, we, gang members? That's part of, yeah. of programs that we are yeah. working on. I should wow. say former gang leaders. Yep. Interesting thing about the violence going on in our streets right now is it sounds counterintuitive, but the breakdown of organized gangs uh-huh. has actually led to more scattered violence ah, because mm-hmm. you don't have that mm-hmm. leadership at makes the sense. top that we all think sure. about when you yeah. think of gangs yeah, and yeah, mafia makes, and yeah, things like makes that. Makes sense. Um, but yeah, we are working with former gang leaders and gang members, um, and I, I'll, I'll talk about that. De- Devon has a connection in the community, so when... I met him, I knew this could be something special. Mm-hmm. And where we are where we are focused right now is a number of different core areas. So the first is a program called Juvenile Redeploy. Mm-hmm. This is where we work with a group of young people who have had some run-in with, with law enforcement. Mm-hmm. They're referred to us by the probation office, from the state's attorney's <laughs> office, from local judges. Mm-hmm. We take these young people. Generally, they can't go to traditional school. Mm -hmm. Um, We've started an education program now where we're providing education to them, accredited education to to get credits, to get them caught back up. Mm -hmm. We we teach them life skills. We teach them anger management. We do programming, and we have advocates who their job is to be there as a resource for these young people and get to know their families. And you find out that these – these young people often are, you know, we had one case where this the, these young people were left in a home without running water or mm-hmm. heat for a weekend while parents, and and you, I'm not going to say there there's never an excuse for certain type of behavior. Right. But if you can at least identify that certain circumstances often lead to yes. that behavior mm-hmm. and you can address those circumstances like with oh, yeah. big brothers big sisters you see people without yeah mm-hmm. without a mentor without somebody to look up to mm-hmm. um so that's one area and we are very grateful that we have funding for that area is that um, are those a lot of volunteers in those areas or are those paid 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 oh, advocates oh yeah. excellent. so so excellent. We, we we have funding that's a pretty mm-hmm. solid state funding program Good. that provides for that part of the programming mm-hmm. then we've also started partnering with Senator Doris Turner gave us a large grant in the mm-hmm. city of Decatur for a program called OKO Peace. And what that initiative is, we took over another property on the east side of Decatur. And we're trying to reach individuals who we know and already have connections with prior to the time that the shots start being fired. Okay. And how you do that, you've got to interact with the young people who you know are the influencers in those Mm -hmm. groups. Mm-hmm. You've got to identify what what has happened, and nine times out of ten, it's social media. Mm-hmm. It's somebody got slighted by somebody else. Mm-hmm. They're going to run into them, or they know they're at a block party, yeah. and then they're and a group of friends are going to go address the situation. And as we all know, the bullets rarely hit the target yep. that they're right. shooting at. Right. Um, and we are also working with the police department and the city council on ident- identifying people before before they've committed an act they can't go back from, sure. right? And, yeah. uh, you know, I'll tell you a quick story. <clears throat> there, there was a young man who I met, and I met him only briefly uh, as part of my, my, my PEP project right now, mm-hmm. and it's called OKO Green, and I'll talk about that here, here in a minute. But this young man told me, hey, you know, thank you for hiring me into this program. Mm-hmm. I just need some more hours. I've got some responsibilities I got to take care of. I said, well, you know, hold on. We're just starting, but I'm going to try to figure it out. Well, I I had figured out how I was going to bring him in mm-hmm. and get him more more money. We got another grant through Archer Daniels Midland, ADM, which all of Decatur should thank you for yeah, everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, the night before he got picked up on a, on a weapons charge, the mm-hmm. night before I was going to see him again, and I – and I said to his friend, and I said, why? You know what? And he, he said, Chris, 
Mr. Ellis, Chris, yeah. or whatever. They, they yeah. give him a lot of different names. Yeah. <laughs> he said, you, you don't understand what it's like living in two worlds. Like, yeah. we want to do better. That's why we show up every day. That's why we're here. But when we leave this campus, when we leave this facility, yeah. we're drugged back into this oh, other other thing. And so I started thinking, well, how 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 are we going to get our our hands around it? And and Devon, I mean, he's such a visionary. And we came up with this program called called OKO Green. And let me back up quickly. Um, Tom Tom Coa. I don't know Under Brad. Tom, Brad, yeah. you know. From Patterson, Tom Chris, print, so Houston yeah. Patterson yeah, Corporation, Houston. commercial printer in Decatur. Well, he came to me and wanted me to get involved in OKO. Mm -hmm. He made a gift of he bought the community center because at one point they took out a loan before I was involved because mm -hmm. they were out of money. They were, they weren't able to feed kids after school, he, so he bought the community center. He bought the note from the bank and he bought fifty vacant lots. <laughs> And he gave a very large monetary donation. Wow. And he man. gave the building back. And he said, Sounds like Tom. He said, Hey, Chris, look, whatever you want to do, he said, but wouldn't it be neat if we could teach these these young people some skills? I said, Well, like, what if we had them, you know, mowing? And he's mm -hmm. like, Great. So we thought about it and we came up with this program called OKO Green. And it's just taken off this summer. And I'm so excited about it. We got it. We applied for and obtained a grant from the state of Illinois that is paying us to employ 10 young people nice. 20 hours a week to learn lawn care. Mm -hmm. Now, what lawn care can do is it not only teaches these young people skill, and these 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 guys, they're, they're all men, but we're not against hiring young sure. girls. We did right. just our first year. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are they are in it. Like mm -hmm. the these young guys. My manager Delani was shot in the stomach last year as mm -hmm. part of this, you know, mm -hmm. ridiculous violence. And yeah. and they're great kids. But that not only are they learning to take care of our property, mm -hmm. they're they're giving pride. They're helping seniors mm -hmm. in need, mm -hmm. doing their yards for free. Oh. Disabled people. We just sent out flyers to 432 Meals on Wheels participants uh -huh. as part of Catholic Charities oh, yeah. to do their yards for free. Wow. That's cool. So, that is. So this group of young men, I work with them every week, teach them how to, how, to, how to run a business, what it's like to run a business, you know, how to <laughs> hustle. I mean, they're, they get in my car, we play the music. I mean, it's fantastic. But I had them help at the food bank last two, two weeks ago. And one of the young men, you know, I said, guys, you're always, you know, you always get, like you're always mm -hmm. getting service. And let's give. And mm -hmm. one of these young men came up to me and said, Mr. Else, it really feels good to help. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, yes. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's programs like that, that we are trying to do where we're not just. We're, we're trying not to give a hand out, mm -hmm. but a hand up. Yeah. Yeah. And we're really trying to train these these young people. That's outstanding. We're offering education. We started a driver's ed program, which Lidos and Amarin just gave us. This is unbelievable. I still can't believe it. I, I cannot believe it. They bought us a brand new electric vehicle, top of the line. Uh -huh. They bought us $30,000 in electric mowing equipment. They're putting in a charger wow. at the station and building a garage to house all this in for us. Wow, that's incredible. Because we're yeah. going to start offering driver's ed, ed oh, yeah. to these sure. young people who often are removed from school. They can't finish school. They mm -hmm. drive anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Then they get tickets, and they can never pay the fine, and it's an endless yeah, cycle. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's given me um, a lot of purpose, right? Yeah. You know when right. when when what you think you should be doing is taken away, mm -hmm. um, it uh, you go through a lot of different things, right? Yeah. And yeah. once you finally, and thank God, you know, I was able to with the support of of, of my wife and kids. Mm -hmm come out on the other side of it and see yeah. a purpose. Yeah. Well, the purpose becomes the ability to serve others. And yeah. these young men yeah. and this program is what I want to serve. That's really cool. That is really cool. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for what you're doing. Yeah. And 
Yeah. And congrats. I know I read your, I think, is it a Volunteer of the Year Award oh, or yeah. a Board yeah. Member of the Year Award yeah. or something? Yes. And Thank you. Yeah, yeah I appreciate well, that. Well, obviously, yeah. in the few minutes we've known yeah. each other, yeah. it's uh, well-deserved. Yeah. Well, well, a pretty moving story. Well, I mean, you build, a, you build a law firm on serving others, right? Yep. The foundation of, I think that's kind of, I, I guess, would be like, that was your purpose and mission in life right. on the law side. and. And now here you are carrying it into something that the community really needs. But you're affecting other people's lives. I mean, that's that's yeah. life changing yeah, stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, I honestly, guys, and I, I think I, I, I know you guys can can relate to this. It, you finally figure out that all of us are we're we're all messed up and we're all doing the best we can right, right? yeah <laughs> and, and he's more messed up than i am well no, I, yeah. brad i i actually thought <laughs> you'd be the most messed up well but he just hasn't you realized it yet understood you know, the, the, the right. wisdom yeah. thing is right yeah, is i just thought i'd jump on that first i know I, yeah. it, was, it was low low hanging fruit <laughs> yeah. to. but you know once i finally got that you know perspective and understanding yeah. that even 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 the kids who are doing bad, right? Yeah, right. They they are doing for whatever reason what they think they have to do in that moment to be whatever it is they they think they need to be. So if we can get to them and change just that mindset of what they can be, mm -hmm. maybe we can stop it or yeah. at yeah. least slow it down, right? Yeah. And it's uh have you have you um, I don't know if I'll ask this question the right way, but no, like in, in in our business, you know, I've sometimes from time to time have lost hope in some of our younger people that we hire sure. where we, we think we're providing them a great uh, opportunity, if you will. And then they don't show up or, yeah. you know, all the things that come with that. Right. So so what I hear from you is that you have a lot of hope like for these young people and that things are like going well it you sounds know, like is that fair it yeah. it it's fair but uh, we've all got to be a realist and Brad what yeah. you're saying is yeah. 100% right yeah we have had a few young people who unfortunately start the program and a few days later they aren't there yeah. whether it be yep. the hard work the morning yep. whatever it is yep. yeah but I do have a lot of hope in at least this core group that I've got with this one program. Yeah. And then I look at our other program yeah. and, you know, maybe it's 80 percent, maybe it's 70 percent. But there there's a large percentage that are there and they keep showing up and they do want to be there. But, um, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. And I don't know if it's well, you guys tell me, is it worse or am I just getting old? Like, yeah, I can't tell, I know. like, if, like, right. I, you know. I don't know. I, we might just be more sensitized to it because we're getting old. <laughs> I'm getting old and crusty, I guess, or grumpy. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. You know, I, yeah, the number of times I've said, young kids today yeah, don't want to work. And my kids, roll their eyes. my I son know. would tell me yeah. that, Dad, we, we just want to work smart and right. that it's, it's, different like the idea of having four different jobs for right. swan but right i don't, I don't, I don't know. know i know but i do i do have hope in that you know the 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 kids i'll call them kids the young men i talk to mm -hmm. they do want something different yeah. and they do want something better and and they do think it's possible mm -hmm. right yeah, so, I mean, it sounds like what you what you're doing, what your organization yeah. is doing, is creating for them. You use yeah. the word hope, some hope, yeah. mm -hmm. because you've allowed to, helped to create a vision and a pathway to get to a different life than yeah. what they have been in. Yeah. It sounds like absolutely. And, and if I mean, if you don't, if you wake up every day and you don't have any hope, right? I mean, yeah. No, I That's know. That's a bad deal. Yeah, it's not good, right? And so you're. It sounds like you know you're really helping create besides the the skills you're giving them, but also helping create a uh, kind of a vision and a pathway for here's a way to to be different and to do it different and to move away from that other life that they have to go home to or right. back in the community to when they're right. not with you guys. Yeah. No, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Our program, um, OKO Peace, is ran by um, Turk. His, his nickname's Turk. Will Smith's his name, and he will talk openly about being in in Chicago, mm -hmm. 
being part of a system, yep. being ending up finding himself on the other side of the law. Mm-hmm. And he's an amazing man because he he got out of that life, yeah. came here, had a really good job as a supervisor at ADM, and then just realized the purpose that he felt he had was to talk and help young people. Oh, and yeah. the way that he connects with these young people in, the, in our program, OKOPC, yeah. he he he's able to talk to them about these life choices and they're able to see with him what difference what a difference can make yeah, right just yeah. one thing can make all the difference in the world not yeah. like he always tells them not going to one party mm-hmm. can be the difference between you being able to wake up anytime you want in the morning or being told what time you're getting up because the prison cells are going to work ah, for you. Yeah, amen. And just, yeah. That's good. if yeah. you don't need to be there, don't go, Yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, I I get discouraged at times. Sure. I mean, you know, I'm not going to lie. You yeah. know, you yeah. you feel and you read the news, but um, in, in Decatur, it, it, there, there is a lot of good happening. And when yeah. I listen to yeah. Carrot Immersion on your podcast mm-hmm. and – Nicole Bateman, you sure. know, is a name, and I, they're both fantastic. Yeah. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of there's stuff. A lot. Yeah. And I drive in Springfield and I go to yeah. Shields and I see that yeah. massive sports complex that they're yeah. going to build. I mean, oh, I know. In fact, we're talking to Scott Dahl and he'll be, he'll probably update us here after, you know, here in a little bit. Okay. And, yeah. Cause they talked about that for, I don't know how years. many years. And yeah. there was a lot of doubt that that would ever get off the ground, and now it's li- real. Right? Yeah. 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 It's super. Yeah. Exciting. There's activity happening yeah. out there yes. now. They're putting work in yeah. the ground. So. Yeah. It. You know, in in listening to Kara, I will tell you, and so thank thank you guys for the yeah. podcast you're doing. Yeah. I, th- I think. Look, I'm a firm. I listen to podcasts all day long. I think mm-hmm. long form podcasts are the best way to get information, the best yeah. way to hear what's really happening, and not mm-hmm. sound bites and. Right. And and hearing you know the the talk about the transformation that's going on you know mm-hmm. it it really does make me mm-hmm. hopeful. And hearing her talk about you asked a great question one of you about what do businesses think about the idea of coming to Illinois? And right. in my mind, I thought thought the same thing. Well, nobody's going to come to Illinois. And, right. and and she said, well, once you get past that perception. Mm-hmm. And hearing her talk about Governor Pritzker and all he's doing to involve business with this new technology, it made right. me think, I don't care what side of the political aisle you're on. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. That's going to help people have a better life for their family, yeah. which is all any of us should care about. Which is the other big thing that I've learned through my not-for-profit days, like being the chair of the United Way Board. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter if somebody voted blue, red, orange, purple, yeah. if they're willing to write a check and yeah. support young sure. people or give their time. And yeah. it's the same with OKO. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, we've, we've, got, we've got a lot of good people doing good things. Yeah. And now it's just, you know, making sure we just stick with it a little bit longer. I think. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, well, it sure sounds see. like you're yeah. uh, the pace setter of yes. all of that. For, <laughs> for sure. sure. I mean, you got to awesome. ask him the question, though, yeah. before he yeah. gets out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah we don't want to monopolize your whole yeah. day. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> we always ask folks if you could, you know, go back 20 or 30 years and tell, give your younger self oh. some advice based on your life experience. What might be those one or two or three things that you would tell your younger self? Yeah, no, that is a great question. <laughs> and, um, I, you know, I, oh, there's so much. And I knew you were going to ask, right? Because, <laughs> you know, I, I know you listen I've listened and, 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 and I knew. <laughs> and, um, and it's still what I would want to tell myself. I guess it's what I try to think about that now I tell my kids mm-hmm. and maybe things I didn't think about. Um, and that is one is make sure you keep your eyes up. You know, there, there is something larger than you. Mm. God is, is, is in whatever form somebody Mm. wants to believe in a higher power to Mm -hmm. look at our universe and not believe there's something going on to me. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. Um, I would also tell my younger self to go to bed earlier Mm -hmm. and, uh, (laughs) and, you know, I would say, Take a deep breath and take it all in because it's so fleeting. I mean, yeah, thinking yeah. about 
getting a diagnosis at 38 that you never in a million years would have thought mm. thought was coming. Mm. And I think back to all the amazing things that I got to do and be a part of, and I don't know if I ever took it in, right? Whereas now, like every morning when the sun rises, I sit mm-hmm. and I just try to take it in and I yeah. try to think about things. And, and you know, that's something... I don't know if you can know at a young age you should do, but I right. would have liked to have some of those moments back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's Good great advice. advice. That is. Yep. Yeah, what a great perspective. Yeah, living in the moment for me was always very, very difficult when I was my younger in business. Yes, that's all I thought about. And Growing. Yeah, yeah. Grow, 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 and you know, I always thought my kids would always be the same age, and and they're not anymore. <laughs> they're not, and, and Brad. yeah. That's a, and you you mentioned before and you're right when you when you own a small business you own any business it's it's twenty four yeah, seven you never turn it off there's no turning it off and you know I think I remember drafting a complaint on Christmas Day once and I ran and yeah. it, it 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 had to be done I'm not yeah. like faulting it but right. being on phone calls at Disney World and again yeah. it, it had to I'm not saying. I wouldn't have done it, mm-hmm. but I would too have liked to when I was done to hang it up, yeah, and then go smile at the mouse or pose for the picture your wife tells you to, and not be thinking about yep, Agreed. that yeah. client. Yep, but that's kind of how it we're is, wired. That's, I think. The, yeah. that's the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for your time today. Oh, this has been you, an guys. outstanding been conversation. Yeah. So, great yeah. to meet you. And it's yep. an honor to have you on. Thanks for what you're doing. Yeah, thank for you. sure. Pretty so, yep. amazing stuff. Yep. Great. Good deal. Thank you.